In this video, you'll learn why PHP frameworks like Laravel and Symfony provide a base controller class that contains methods that are shared across different controllers. This reduces repetition in the code and makes it easier to maintain. So far in this series, we have three routes, which are handled by methods in two controller classes, the home controller and the product controller. In the action methods inside these controllers, we have a lot of repetition. In each case, to render a template, we are using a renderer object to get the output from the template. We then use a response factory object to create a stream with that output, then the same object to create a response. We set the response body to the stream and return the response. Let's extract this code out so that we can avoid this repetition. Let's do this in a parent class that these controller classes can extend and therefore inherit the common functionality. So let's start by creating a folder inside the source framework folder called controller, then a file inside that called abstractcontroller.php. In here, let's add the corresponding class definition. We'll make this class abstract as we're not going to create any objects of this class directly. The repeated code in the controller is rendering a template optionally with some data, and ultimately returning a response. So let's add a method to the abstract controller class called render, with a string argument for the template file and an optional array of data. We'll make this a protected method, as we need it to be inherited by the classes that extend this class, but we don't need to be able to access it from outside the class. For the return type, we'll specify the response interface for which we need a corresponding use statement. For the contents of this method, in the product controller, let's start by copying the contents of the show method and pasting them in the render method in the abstract controller class. In the call to the render method of the renderer object, let's replace this literal string with the template argument, and likewise this array with the data argument. Back in the product controller, let's extend the abstract controller class, which requires a use statement to import it. Then, in the index method, we can replace the entire contents of that method with a call to the render method on the current object, passing in the path to the template file. Let's give that a try by going to the products route. This gives us an error the controller can't access the private renderer property. This property is being created in the constructor, using property promotion. At the moment it has private visibility, so it can only be accessed inside this class. If we change the visibility of these two properties to protected, then they will be accessible in the parent class too. So the abstract class we're extending will have access to these properties. Let's try that again, and now it works. Let's do the same for the show method. So let's call the render method on the current object, passing in the template path and the array of data, and returning its return value. We can then remove the rest of the code in this method. Let's give that a try by going to the root that matches the show method, and it works. So this works, but there is a problem. In this and the other controller class, we're injecting two dependencies, which are promoted to protected properties. The render method in the abstract controller needs to use these properties, so any class that extends this one will need those properties to exist. The problem with this is that we'd need to remember to inject those dependencies in any child class, as we're doing, for this to work. So instead, let's inject these dependencies into the abstract controller. So, in the products controller, let's cut the constructor method and paste it in the abstract Great. controller. As these properties no longer need to be protected, we can change them back to being private. Let's also <laughs> move the use statements for these two interfaces from the product controller to the abstract controller. Let's try that, and it still works. Likewise for the products page, which runs the index method. 
So now the product controller no longer contains any repetition and is much simpler and clearer. Let's do the same for the home controller. So first, let's extend the abstract controller class and input that class with a use statement. Note that even though we're not going to use them now, I'll leave the use statements for the factory and renderer interfaces in here for the moment. Now we can remove the constructor method. In the index method, we can just return the result of calling the render method on the current object, passing in the same values as before for the template path and data. We can then remove the rest of the code in this method. Let's try that, and it works. So now the home controller is much clearer and simpler too. There is now, however, another problem. Let's say you need to use an object of another class in this method. Let's create a date time object as an example. Then, instead of this literal string, let's use that object to get the current day of the week. Let's run this, and we get the current day of the week returned from the date time object. As we learnt earlier on in this series though, it's better to inject dependencies instead of creating them directly. So let's add the constructor method with an argument of this class, promoting it to a private property. Note that normally we'd type hint to an interface when injecting dependencies, but for the purposes of this example, I'll keep it simple and just use the class. Then in the index method, we can remove the line where we create the object and use the property instead. Now when we run this though, we get an error. The renderer property must not be accessed before initialization. By adding the constructor method to the home controller, we've overridden the constructor method in the parent class. So the constructor code in the abstract controller parent class never runs. So the factory and renderer objects are never created and assigned to the properties. To fix this, in the child home controller class, we need to call the parent constructor method. We can do this directly inside this class's constructor. However, we need to make sure we supply this method call with its required arguments. So let's copy these from the abstract controller's constructor and paste them in the constructor method of the home controller. We can then pass these arguments to the constructor method call. Note that the arguments to the constructor in this class don't necessarily need to be in the same order. Now when we run this, it works. So this is the problem with injecting dependencies using the constructor of a parent class. If we want to use the constructor in the child class, we need to call the parent class's constructor with any arguments that it has. This makes it difficult to use the constructor in controller classes, as we have to make sure we include all the correct arguments. What's more, if we change the abstract controller's constructor, we would have to change any child classes that are explicitly calling the constructor. The alternative is to inject these dependencies in another way. With the dependency injection container we're using, PHPDI, we can also inject dependencies using properties. This is actually the recommended way to do it for controller classes. So in the abstract controller, let's add two private properties that match the constructor arguments, one for the response factory and one for the renderer. We can then remove the constructor method entirely. To tell the DI container that these properties should be injected, we add the inject attribute to each one. And to use this attribute like this, we need to import it with a use statement. To enable injection using attributes, we need to set an option on the DI container object. To do that, first we need to create a container builder object. We then configure this with the array of definitions by calling the add definitions method on the builder object, passing in the array. We can then get the container object by calling the build method. Now we have the builder object, we can enable attributes by calling the use attributes method, passing in true. 
So now these dependencies in the abstract controller class will be injected by setting these properties. Note that this works even though these properties have private visibility in this class. Note that this class now no longer has a constructor method. So in the home controller, we can now use the constructor to just inject the date time object. So let's remove the factory and renderer arguments and also the call to the parent class's constructor. We can also remove these use statements for the factory and renderer interfaces as we're no longer using them. Now when we try this, it works. So now the home controller is much simpler and we can optionally use the constructor without having to worry about the parent class having a constructor method. Note that we could inject this date time object using a property too, just as we did in the abstract controller class. But for the purposes of this example, I'll leave it like this. So if you have a controller where you need to render a template, you can get this functionality by simply extending the abstract controller class. This gives you access to the render method, which will render the specified template along with any optional data and return a response object. Note that this is exactly what Symfony does when you extend the Symfony base controller class. Also note that extending the base controller class is optional. If you have a controller that contains methods in which you don't need to render a view, for example, if you just want to return JSON or some headers, then you can just create a standalone controller class. As long as you return a response object, this will work with the rest of the framework we've developed so far. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.